management has serious environmental effects making the passage of the Republic Act 9003 or the Ecological Solid Waste Management Act of 2000, a landmark environmental legislation in the Philippines. The law was crafted in response to the looming garbage problems in the country. RA 9003 declares the policy of the state in adopting a systematic, comprehensive and ecological solid waste management program that ensures the protection of public health and the environment and the proper segregation, collection, transport, storage, treatment, and disposal of solid waste through the formulation and adaptation of best environmental practices. RA 9003 was passed by the Philippine Congress on December 20, 2000, and was subsequently approved by the Office of the President on January 6, 2001. It contains seven chapters, subdivided into 66 sections, setting out policy direction for an effective solid waste management program in the country. Ecological Solid Waste Management Act of 2000 Republic Act 9003 Describe solid waste management as a discipline associated with the control of generation, event storage, collection, transfer and transport, processing, and disposal of solid waste. The manner by which these activities are conducted shall be in accord with the best principles in public health, economics, engineering, conservation, aesthetics, other environmental considerations, and public attitudes. The Act provides for a comprehensive ecological solid waste management program by creating the necessary institutional mechanism and incentives, appropriating funds, declaring certain acts prohibited, and providing penalties. Institutional Mechanism The establishment of a National Solid Waste Management Commission and Solid Waste Management Board in each local government unit is mandated by Republic Act 9003 to be represented by public officials in their ex official capacity and the private sector. The Commission shall serve as the coordinating body and likewise develop and implement the National Solid Waste Management Framework. The SWMB, on the other hand, is directed formulate a 10-year local ecological solid waste management plans instituting an effective and sustainable solid waste management plan with primary emphasis on implementation of all feasible reuse, recycling, and composing programs. This is pursuant to relevant provision under Republic Act 7160 or the Local Government Code. Comprehensive Solid Waste Management Waste Characterization and Segregation The solid waste generated within the area of jurisdiction shall be characterized for initial source reduction and recycling element of the local waste management plan. A separate container is required for each type of waste for on-site collection, properly marked as compostable, non-recyclable, recyclable or special waste. Waste segregation shall primarily be conducted at the source including household, commercial, industrial and agricultural sources. Social toxic. This refers to the methods by which the LGUs can reduce a sufficient solid waste disposed within 5 years. LGUs are expected to divert at least 25% of all solid waste from waste disposal facilities through reuse, recycling, and composting activities. The rate of waste diversion is set to increase every 3 years. Collection and Transport of Solid Waste the geographic subdivisions are taken into account in the coverage of the solid waste collection area in every barangay, ensuring a 100% collection efficiency within 24 hours from all sources. The plan shall define and identify specific strategies and activities taking into account the availability and provision of properly designed containers in selected collection points 
while waiting collection and transfer, segregation of different types of waste, hauling and transfer of solid waste from collection points to final disposal sites, issuance and enforcement of ordinances for effective implementation and provision of properly trained officers and workers. All personnel directly dealing with collection of solid waste must be equipped with personal protective gears for their protection. Recycling Program The Department of Trade and Industry, in a coordination with other concerned agencies, is directed to publish an inventory of existing markets for recyclable materials, product standards for recyclable and recycled materials, and a proposal to stimulate demand for the production of recycled materials and products. Moreover, a coding system for equilibrium is expected from DPI, and environmentally acceptable products shall be allowed within one year after public notice as alternative available to consumers but at a cost at exceeding 10% of disposable products. The use of non-environmentally acceptable packaging is strictly prohibited by the Act. LGUs are mandated to establish materials recovery facilities also known as MRF, in each barangay or cluster of barangays designed to receive, sort, process, and store compostable and recyclable materials efficiently. The residual waste shall be then transferred to a long-term storage of disposal facility or sanitary landfill. All solid waste disposal facilities or sites in the country shall be published by a Department of Natural Environment and Natural Resources. No open dumps nor any practice or disposal of solid waste does constitute open dumps for solid waste shall be allowed. The Act further provides for conversion of existing open dumps to controlled dumps within three years. Composing. The Department of Agriculture shall publish an inventory of existing markets and demands for compost that is updated annually. This compost intended for commercial distribution should conform to the standards set by the Department of Agriculture for organic fertilizers. Local Government Solid Waste Management to encourage and facilitate the development of local plans, NSWMC is mandated to publish guidelines for identification of areas with common waste management problems and appropriate units for clustering solid waste management services. This is to reinforce provisions of the local government code for all provinces cities, municipalities, and barangays to consolidate or coordinate efforts, services, and resources to establish common waste treatment and disposal facilities. Incentive Scheme An incentive scheme pursuant to Omnibus Investment Code is provided by the Act to encourage the participation of individuals, private organizations, and entities including non-government organizations in developing outstanding and innovative projects, technologies, processes, and techniques or activities in reuse, recycling, and reduction. This includes tenure tax and duty exemption on imported capital equipment, vehicles, legacies, gifts, and donations used for collection of solid waste and tax credit equivalent to 50% of the national internal revenue taxes and custom duties. Non-fiscal incentives are granted to business and industries engaged in recycling of waste in the form of simplified procedures for importation of equipment, spare parts, new materials, supplies, and for the export of processed products. Other forms of incentives includes the extension of financial services to individuals, enterprises, or private entities engaged in solid waste management, and grant entitlement to outstanding LGUs. Those LGUs who host common waste management facilities can likewise receive incentives. Penal Provisions Chapter 6 provides a comprehensive list of prohibited acts including 1. Littering, throwing, 
dumping of waste matters in public places such as roads, sidewalks, canals, esteros or parks, and establishment or causing or permitting the same. 2. Undertaking activities or operating, collecting or transporting equipment in violation of sanitation operation and other requirements for permits set forth in or established pursuant to this act. 3. The open burning of solid waste. 4. Causing or permitting the collection of non-segregated or unsorted waste. Number 5. Squatting in open dams and landfills. Number 6. Open dumping, burying of biodegradable or non-biodegradable materials in flood-prone areas. Number 7. Unauthorized removal of recyclable material intended for collection by authorized persons. Number 8. The mixing of source-separated recyclable materials with other solid waste in any vehicle, box, container, or receptacle used in solid waste collection or disposal. Number 9. Establishment or operation of open dumps as enjoined in this act, or closure of said dumps in violation of Section 37. 10. The manufacture, distribution, or use of non-environmentally acceptable packaging materials. 11. Importation of consumer products packaged in non-environmentally acceptable materials. 12. Importation of toxic waste misrepresented as recyclable or with recyclable content. 13. Transport and dumping in bulk of collected domestic, industrial, commercial, and institutional waste in areas other than centers or facilities prescribed under this Act. Number 14. Site preparation. Construction, expansion, or operation of waste management facilities without an environmental compliance certificate required pursuant to Presidential Decree Number 1586 and this act and not conforming with the land use plan of the LGU. Number 15. The construction of any establishment within 200 meters from open dumps or control dumps or sanitary landfills and number 16 the construction or operation of landfills or any waste disposal facility on any aquifer groundwater reservoir or watershed area and or any portions thereof The yearly amount of waste in the country is expected to increase from 13.48 million tons in 2010 to 14.66 million tons in 2014 to 16.63 million tons in 2020. After China and Indonesia, the Philippines ranks as the world's third biggest polluter with 2.7 million metric tons of plastic waste generated each year. Human activities contribute significantly in waste management. Recognizing the effects of improper management, garbage crisis can be prevented by practicing waste characterization and segregation at source, proper collection and transfer, recycling and composting as mandated by the law.